One of the biggest hurdles for many first time home buyers is coming up with the down payment. Now, I know this can be a daunting task because he's like, hey Malcolm, you're only saying that for FHA I need to put down 3.5, but I'm working day by day, I'm working check by check. It's hard to save that much money, right? And um, to be truthful, it's hard for a lot for some home buyers. You're not alone, especially my blue collar workers, my firefighters, my EMT, my teachers, my police officers. It can be scary to say that, hey, you have to try to save forty, fifty thousand dollars and this is exactly true with one of my clients his name is nelson he was in the same predicament as you probably are finding yourself in like hey i want to buy a house or i want to buy another house but between childcare, groceries bills renting or even having my first mortgage like how am i supposed to put aside extra money to then buy another house so i can create that generational wealth now you are not alone in the struggle and that's one of the reasons why i'm doing this video for you to show you how we can possibly it's not always possibly use a 401k to help you out so this is nelson's story this is a true story i'm not making this up this is unscripted like always and um nelson was a police officer i actually met nelson about i want to say three to four years ago and we were in a training together and Nelson was just telling me his story. He got married, he had a kid, and he had a two-family house. And what I like about this is Nelson did an FHA loan for his two-family. And I'm always preaching that FHA is one of the best ways to get into real estate and to get into home ownership because it only requires you to put down 3.5%. So Nelson, before he became a cop, was saving up all his money. When he became a cop, saving up his money, finally caught the market at a good time, put down 3.5%. Or his two family but now his family is growing he had a daughter and he was thinking about having another kid he's like yo malcolm i need more room this two family is not enough for me like how am i supposed to get this down payment and we were thinking we were debating i told him about a good app to use that's gonna save some money we did what well, everyone else is probably telling you on youtube hey open up another savings account auto save put money aside but it's sometimes it's just not enough and it's scary. It's scary to know that you want something, but you don't know how to achieve it. So I'm going to give you the same exact six steps that I did with Nelson to help him get a house. And it wasn't easy by all means. I'm not telling you it's going to happen quickly, but it can be done and you can use your 401k to make it happen. So I'm going to give you the exact same six steps in this video. So make sure you watch until the end. And number six, I'm going to give you something actually special. So the first thing is you're going to check your plan. With this one, we had the around the same pension plan because as you guys know, I'm a police officer also. So I kind of knew already, but with other people, you don't know what your plan is. Most people don't actually look at their benefits, don't look at their 401k, the 457 plan or whatever it is. So make sure that they allow withdrawals for a down payment, especially seeing if it's your first house or your second house, tell them like, do you, allow withdrawal because not all plans do so it's important to confirm with your plan that it actually does so if your plan doesn't do it stop this video here because it's not going to help you but if your plan does do it please keep watching and listen to step number six now you're going to find out what requirements they have for you to take out the money step two determine how much you have way too often people think they have more money set aside for their future self than they actually do so once you confirm that you can a take out a withdrawal to how much money you have available now we can start saying all right if we're looking at a three hundred thousand dollar house or five hundred thousand dollar house how much money are we do we actually need to take from the 401k do i have some money in savings like let's figure out exactly let's start coming up with a plan before you withdraw this money from your 401k now step number three complete the necessary paperwork it's always something it's not gonna be like hey you just call in and say hey i want to take out money for this and they're just gonna send it to you no most times especially with nelson's case we actually have to fill out paperwork and show proof that he was buying the house so he didn't get hit with taxes and um some other kind of fees and issues they wanted to make sure that the money was going towards a house so please make sure that you do the same thing look at the paperwork 
and then give them the required information that they're asking for. And you also have to remember that it's not always, it doesn't always happen like this spontaneous, that's the way it was, right? Mm-hmm. It actually takes time. It takes time for you to send out the paperwork for them to receive it, to go through it. People work at different paces. So depending on when you're buying, you might be in a bigger rush. So speak with your loan officer and they will help you with the timeline and tell you, hey, start the withdrawal now. So before we get to closing, the money's there. Number four, consider the benefits. Now, one of the biggest benefits of using your 401k for a down payment is that you can avoid paying, possibly paying, private mortgage insurance. That's if you put down 20%. But sometimes you might not even want to put that much. It all depends on you. And I personally say it always depends on what your goal is. So if your goal is, hey, Malcolm, I just want to buy the house. I'm fine with paying mortgage insurance. I can refinance later. That's fine. But if you want to avoid it, then you're going to have to take out more money to put down on the house so you can avoid paying that PMI. But like I say, it's up to you. Each person is different. Each person has different needs. And in Nelson's case, he was trying to avoid paying the PMI. We were able to find a special program for him that helped him because he actually bought what's called a jumbo loan. So his house value was over the conforming limits for FHA. um, And we ended up doing a special program where he put down 10% and we were able to avoid PMI, but it was a jumbo loan. So that's one of the good things about being a broker. You find different programs that can help your client. That's why I say specifically speak with your loan officer, speak with your lender, let them know what your goals are, what do you want to do, because we can help advise you better once we know the full story and the full picture. Full picture. Now, step number five, weigh the risk, because I'm not going to make it sound all glamorous. Like, hey, just use your 401k. No, there are risks that comes with using your 401k especially when you use it as a down payment. Now, in some situations, it works out to be better, but you have to consider the long-term risk. When you're taking out money from your 401k, your retirement account, it means you're reducing the savings you have for retirement. So you are using money that was for the future you for something now. Now, that all depends on your situation. I'm gonna keep going back and stressing this. Because if your situation is like, hey, Malcolm, I'm spending way too much in rent and I can't save money because the rent I'm paying is pretty much a mortgage, then it might make more sense for you to say, hey, let me take from my future self and put it in an investment. And when I get older, because the more you own the house, the longer you're paying on it, now the principal balance is low and you get what's called equity. So technically you can use that and then further your retirement but at least you're paying down on something you own. But if your goal is just, hey, I just wanna buy a house and I don't really care, maybe it might be better for you to just stay in an apartment or rent or wherever you're doing and not touch your 401k. So it all depends on your situation and your goals. That's why I specifically say this isn't for everyone. I'm just telling you a story about a client, Nelson, who was able to use the 401k and able to take a withdrawal from it, and it actually helped him create generational wealth because he had a two family, now he has another another single family. So now he has two houses, and we were able to do this thinking, thanks to his 401k. Like, not everyone can take the money from him, but if you can take it and you know what to do with it properly and it fits in the terms of withdrawal, go for it. Now, Most importantly, this is why I kept telling you, wait for step six. Consider your other options. Now, you're probably saying, Malcolm, what other options? There's multiple ways to get money for your down payment of your house. Number one, you can speak to whatever job you're doing. Let them know that, hey, what can I do for a promotion? How can I get more money? Because I need to buy a house. A lot of people don't realize that speaking to your supervisor, speaking to the owner of the company, depending on where you work, they can give you a raise especially if they know that you have other ambitions and other goals, you'll be surprised at how many people are willing to help you once they know what your goals are, right? Number two, maybe you want to start another job, start a part-time gig, maybe start your side business that you've been thinking about. This is all things you can do to create extra income so you can have money set aside for your down payment. Number three, there's saving programs, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, like Digit, um, starting your own savings club. These are things that you can do to create more income. Now, granted, this might these things do take time and it all depends on your situation, like I was going to say again, but if you have enough time where you can wait 
then do something like that. And lastly, ask your family. You can take a gift from a family member. So you might want to consider saying, hey, mom, dad, brother, sister, uncle, cousin, I want to buy a house or I want us to stop renting. Let us all come together and purchase a house and we just take rooms. If you're cool with your family and they don't annoy you, this might be a perfect situation, a perfect time to stress to them the fact that, hey, you're paying nine. 900 in rent, you're paying 1500, you're paying 2000. Together, that's a mortgage or more than a mortgage. Plus, you guys have a backyard, and now you're creating generational wealth, something that the family owns together. So, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. That's what you're saying, right? That sounds so nasty now. That I'm thinking about why would you mm -hmm. want to skin a cat? So, there's multiple ways to buy a house. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely not talking about rabbits. We have rabbits in Long Island. It's very cute. But you got to be careful because some of these neighbors out here definitely be trying to catch them. Like, I'm like, Yo, why are you trying to catch the rabbit? Let the rabbit hop around and enjoy himself. <laughs> There's multiple ways to achieve a goal. Whether it's getting rich, whether it's getting a house, whether it's getting a rabbit. <laughs> Choose the one that works with you. But like I always tell you, consider everything before you make your choices. And I'm a licensed loan officer. I'm not a licensed financial expert. So please speak with them if you need the proper guidance. My job is just to tell you that we can do it and working with the right person can help you. So using your 401k for a down payment on your first home is an option and it's worth considering to do. But it's essential to understand the risk and the benefits and carefully weigh out your options before making a decision. If you have any questions, put in the comment section and I'm going to show you guys something cool for waiting to the end of the video. So I'm putting out a new link, which you can click right in the bottom of the comment section. This link is going to give you a chance to have a free one-on-one -on -one call with me or someone from my team. Normally for these calls, I usually charge $150, but for watching this video, you guys are gonna get it absolutely free. So that's one good thing. And then two, if you're liking the shirts that I'm wearing, guess what, it's about time. But my clothing line is dropping finally. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. Check the links in the bottom of this video, um, the one-on-one -on -one call and the clothing line. I appreciate you. It's called, uh, actually, Jashelle, my wife came up with the name, uh, the Lono First Set Collection. Uh, I think it's pretty dope. And it's going to be more than just clothing. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the podcast name, if you guys didn't realize. Real Estate Unfiltered, that's the podcast. Oh, see that? See that? Always, always branding inside your video. But um, the Lono First Set Collection is going to be more than just clothes. We're going to give out. I'm coming out with so much information for that that's specifically for people who are in or are part of that group. Um, I want to share more than what I'm just sharing on my YouTube, and I can't wait for you guys to see everything that we have in store. But that's enough. Over and out. Nelson, we did it. Oh, if I didn't tell you, Nelson actually closed. This was a true story, and he closed. I need to, maybe I should put a picture of Nelson here or something <laughs> like that. No? Okay, just also no. Over and out.